What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights. You already know what it is. I'm with the one and only, the beautiful, the amazing, the talented, Miss Sarafina, the god, what I should say, the godmother of boxing. Everything. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I'm taking a break for a second. I need to figure it out. What's going you, on? Because this list is so crazy. How you been? I've been good with, uh, yeah. under the circumstances, you know. I feel you. I feel you. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm still trying to figure out how to edit the um the last podcast interview we did at the studio. Mm. Um, you know, the engineer, the audio guy, he kind of messed that up real bad, and it was a beautiful interview. I mean, it was such an amazing interview, and you explained a lot of things taking place within your career in boxing that I definitely need to get that out for you as well as everybody else. Right. It was, it, I mean, it was just such a really phenomenal interview, very informative for those who may not understand exactly what it takes to be part of the sport as well as a woman of the sport. So I, I'm going to work my, right. my butt off to get that off, get that out no matter what. <laughs> now... What's been going on with you since, uh, you know, this, this pandemic and everything? I see um, you killing them in the streets the with, the, with the art, yeah. Yeah, I've been working <laughs> on the art, right? Um, you know, just trying to stay focused and, and start with my own thing because I don't work for Greg anymore. And, mm. um, you know, just, just trying to, like, really regroup. And I think this is a good time for everybody to do that, like, really figure out what it is that you really want to do with your life. Yes. You know, because it's kind of like we got put on pause and yeah. um, we just all have to just figure it out, you know, and, and really be creative, you yes. know, because it's not like we're, you know, a lot of us are unemployed and, you know, especially in the boxing world, you know, uh, we just got to get creative and, and use our abilities that we're God given. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to get creative with your hustle now, for sure. So. Yeah. Now, you've been involved in boxing for quite some time, for many years. Um, you've transitioned from, you know, driving fighters driving fighters to the gym, mm -hmm. um, assisting with all types of public relations aspects of the job, um, mm -hmm. helping fighters get situated with um, hotel rooms, things like that, being the main spokesperson for the brand, you know, Oh, plenty of times. <laughs> All the heat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and then also looked upon as, okay, she's just another female in the sport of boxing who, who may not have earned their right to be where they're at, but in actuality, you have, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been in the sport from all angles, like yeah. even as a fighter to, you know, a manager to yes. promotions to whatever, you know, to, to, like you said, doing airport pickups. Like I started from the bottom for real, for real. Yeah. You know, so I've been in this game, like, just on the business side for 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that's, and before that, I was trying to fight. So, yes. Yes. Um, I've been in this sport a long time, so it's not like I just popped up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely paid my dues. Um, and yeah, so I'm not just like, oh, she's just a chick that, you know, somebody gave her a job no that's not what happened no nah, you you know <laughs> like you know what i mean from from gary shaw days to roy jones days uh, like you just mentioned greg cohen and and, and all Demetri salida and a whole lot of other individuals like yeah. you know you work with a lot a lot of people in the sport you, you are, i mean you are Devin haiti's um, godmother correct I, well, I call him my nephew. Yeah, I call my yeah. nephew because I used to, you know, like, yeah. you know, when his dad would be away on business, I would take him to the gym and pick him up and from school, and he'd come hang out the house, and you know what I mean. So yeah. I like, I felt like I, you know, kind of. But you are part of the family, no matter what. Of course, of yeah, course, you know, definitely. Um, the love is there. Uh, I'm so happy yeah. to see how he is now, and I'm just so proud. And your daughter is um, well, Roy Jones is. The golf God, daughter, God, daughter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah. Fighter, that's my guy right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and I and one thing I also want to applaud you and commend you on and, and say thank you because I don't even need to say it like that, but you know, you are a big advocate for um, Black Lives Matter. I see you on the oh, front absolutely. lines, you know, what I mean, you, you, you go hard, you, you, mm -hmm. I believe your daughter's half black. Mm -hmm. And she be out there with you. Y'all yep. be killing it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important. I mean, yeah. especially like, you know, when I see um, 
other white people, they embrace the culture and they love black culture so much. When, but when it comes time to speak up and speak out and fight for the people that you, you know, that you emulate, you're not there. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, if you, if you love black culture that much, then actually love the people too, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, it was important for me to, to be out there and, and, um, and showing support because I do have a black child and regardless of if she's half white, you know, this, this country looks at her as black, you know, yeah. she's, checking that, she's checking that black box, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for the rights of my child, you uh, know, and, and, and for the rights of the people that I love, you yes. know, I, you know, my friends, my family, like my family, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it, there's friends that i they might as well be my blood, gotcha. you know? So it's just, it's, it's my duty to do so, you know? Gotcha. And my mom and my, my father were out there too in their little town in Washington. Like they, they did it back in the day. My parents are in their seventies. So they were in the heyday of all the shit. So, you know, yeah. I have pictures of my mom out doing the same thing back in, back in the sixties and seventies. So it's only right. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. I tell you one thing: the genes are strong, cause you look oh, just yeah. like you look just like your father, oh, man. <laughs> and your daughter look, and your daughter looks just like you. <laughs> I mean, I'll be looking at baby pictures. I'm like, well, goddamn, lot of them all are three. They they look just right, like. right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. You know, so with your artwork, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I I didn't I didn't know. I'm like Tony Baker voice. I didn't know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like I said, like we gotta just be creative now. Like, you know, the world handed us a bowl of lemons. You know, and we just mm-hmm. had to make lemonade out of it. You gotta get creative, like, you know. Um, That's something black like lemonade. Me, <laughs> yeah, right. It took, it took, it took boxing from me, and then you know I tried to start bartending. Yeah. Boom. Then COVID hit. Boom, oh, yeah. I can't do that. Now what am I gonna do? Yeah. You know, so it's like, all right, I can paint. You know, I'm creative. Let me just see what I, you know, what I could shake. And, you know, it's been holding me down. So it's definitely a blessing. And I see a lot of a lot of fighters and artists, musicians, they they're looking at your work, they're purchasing your work and yeah, like yeah, I, said, yeah. I mean it's like that so you gotta use social media to your advantage, you know. Um, especially like, you know, we we're in a game to where, you know, you know, a lot of fighters that got a lot of followers, you know, if, if there's anything like, you know, I've, I have fighters around me that I've known since they were before they were pro, you know, yes, so yes. I'm like, yo, post, post this for me. And they post it and they've got however many followers. So people see it. So it's just like a trickle effect, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I've been using social media to my advantage for sure. And that's the power of networking as well. Absolutely, absolutely, and keeping good relationships. Facts, facts. Mm-hmm. And you, you always been that person that you know makes sure everything is copacetic with everybody. And you I, keep, you I know. try to, but there's sometimes <laughs> where I, where I, you know, I, enough is enough. I feel you. You know what I mean? And and uh, we'll get to that, right? I got you. I got you. Yeah. Let me ask you this: How, how uh, do your paintings go for certain prices, or does it? De- it determine- just varies depending on size and detail. Oh, okay. You know, but you also have to take in to, you know, how many hours does it take? Mm-hmm. You know, what are the costs of the materials? So, you know, when people are like, "Damn, that's that's a lot." Well, what do you get paid at your work if you were to work? Yeah. I don't yeah. know, thirty hours on something. Facts, facts. You facts. know, so you have to like take the time to think about that before you go to an artist and say, hey, can I get this for 200 bucks? No, yeah. you can't. Sorry. <laughs> you got to nah. pay for the canvas first, brother. <laughs> right. Canvas, paint, all the stuff that goes into it. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts on what's everything taking place right now in the sport? In regards to? Everything. Like, I mean, you know, Fight start to broad sl- question. So I like, know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you know, fight start to slowly come back. Um, we see top rank putting some things together. Uh, Facebook fighting live. They have some fights taking place with the pay per view mm-hmm. model and things like that. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on, in, in regards to like you know 
just the sport in itself, and, and match boxing. And I see Eddie Hearn is putting fights on in his own backyard, per se. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think about how, how things are going forward and what the future lo- what the future may hold for the sport? Um, I mean, it's in, it's important for it to get back going because, you know, this is their job. Like, fighters need to eat, too, um, and to stay active because that ring rust is real, you know. So the longer they stay out, you know, there's they, they're not going to get the same – like, you can't even train properly. Like, guys are having to go, like, to underground gyms and stuff just mm. to train and get sparring and stuff like that, but – Um, It's important that it comes back slowly and, um, you know, we keep, we keep the audience tuned in and um, don't forget about what's going on. Like, cause you know, the thing about this sport is that the, the, the more you don't fight, the more people just forget about you very quickly, Mm -hmm. right? Like you could just be forgotten about like that. You know, like your yesterday's news. So it's important to keep these guys in in the forefront and on the TV and in people's faces, so people don't forget. Because before all this, people, were, you know, these guys were have like the ball was rolling, like they were they were hot, like mm-hmm. Edgar Berlanga, you know, like yeah. thirteen and 0, 13 knockouts all in the first round, and then boom, his fight gets canceled, and then you know he was on like a streak. Like, he was on fire. And then yeah. it's just, like, kind of people just like, oh, okay. You know, like, we're not even thinking about boxing anymore right now, you know? So... Yeah, we're thinking about life. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's good to keep it um, to keep it on the TV. And because what else we got to do? Do you Go think... The, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> do you think the sport will ever get back to where it used to be? How we used to be able to um, walk around, chill, hang out... Be at the fights I, I, live. Slowly but surely, I I do believe the mask is going to be a, a new norm, mm. um, which really sucks for me because I like men with pretty teeth. So dating <laughs> is going to be fucking terrible. Be like, can you lift your mask down, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! But, um, okay. But yeah, I mean. It, it probably will. Um, there'll probably be limited seating, of course, at first, you know, especially at the garden and places like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, at, at some point, they're going to have to get a hold on this, just like they did any other pandemic that has been in the past. You know, it's it's always come and gone. It, it might stick around for a while and they might try to force us for vaccines and all that I don't know how that's gonna work out because so many people are just like so hip to that shit now and they're like no nah, I'm not getting that goddamn vaccine mm-hmm. I mean I know I I'm not going to like I'm not doing a vaccine um but to each his own okay okay yeah I was I was always thinking about given the fact that boxing is just returning and seeing all the the um the protocols the regulations that are taking place in a limited amount of people that are taking mm-hmm. part in the, the events that we're you know being seen and that are being broadcast and now we're also being seen we're also seeing that people within within are tested positive for coronavirus and right. things of that nature so it's like well how do we really deal with the situation that's going around and affecting all of us as a whole how do we get back to where we want to be where we used to be i mean crowds and crowds of people people i mean we, it's gonna be a yeah. minute it's going to be a minute. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not going to happen overnight because you see what's happening in the States that they just opened up and they're just letting people just do whatever and their numbers are skyrocketing, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, and you know, even I'm from LA and just like yesterday, two of my friends called me and said they caught coronavirus, Damn. you know? So, and they're in LA. So, I mean, it's just like, and they just started opening. So, um, it's hard to say, you know, it's really hard to say when we'll get back to like what we think of as normal. Okay. Now today's news, we yeah. just found out, I know, I know, I had to get there. <laughs> what are your thoughts on today's news regarding Jarrell Big Baby Miller? Um, That's the, I mean, I don't want to say, I don't know, I didn't take the test. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the, I didn't see the results. However, it's reported that he tested positive. They're not reporting false news. This is <laughs> fake news, okay? <laughs> um, you know, I no longer work for his promoter, so yeah. I'm not, like, really in 
you know, I can't, liberty to speak, but I, um, I can't really say I'm surprised. You know, um, once I feel like once um, guys start getting on that stuff the way that they do, um, it becomes a mental thing. Mm. And they no longer have confidence in themselves in the ring without it. Okay. Um, so I, I really feel like that plays a part in it. And I feel like it's deeper than just, oh, let me just take this. It's, it's, I think it becomes a mental health issue. Mm. Because when you know that, mm. like even with the Joshua thing, right? Yeah. Um, when you had that ten ten million dollars on the table, I I would go in there even if I know I didn't train right. Like even if I knew that I was sick, like if I was sick, I'd still fight. You know, like to to now, I, be- jeopardize. Sure, wait, wait. Before I let you go further, now you were working with Big Baby at this time. Right. I want people to understand exactly who you are. Right. You, right, were, right. you were you were working with Big Baby and Greg Cohen Promotions, alongside Dimitri Salida and Salida Promotions. During mm-hmm. the time that Big Baby had to sign a greed fight for $10 million against Anthony Joshua for the unified titles. Right. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> when it, it just, it baffled me, you yeah. know, because when I asked him the first time, he said, oh, no, I was getting shots in my elbow for, the, you know, and I was like, okay. But then the, all the other results came in and I'm just like, come on, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you knew what you were doing, but... You know, How was that conversation? I, I mean, it, you know, it was just, it, it like it really wasn't too much conversation. It just, gotcha. was, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, just the fact that um, I went to bat for him, you know, like I really was very, very vocal because. Oh, yes. yes um, Twitter, because everywhere. I felt like they treated him differently than they treated Canelo yeah. or they treated, you know, and, you know, this is before they gave him the six months, yeah. which is a slap on the wrist, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, I was, I was going in, like, I was, I was really, like, passionate about it and just trying to protect my fighter because that's just the person that I am. You was going you know, at like, everybody. If anybody says you're something, on my you're team, going. like, I'm, I'm riding with you to the wheels fall off. Facts, facts. You know, like, that's just who I am. You know, even if you're wrong, you know, even if you're wrong and I got love for you and you're on my team, Mm -hmm. I'm like, we just going up in flames together. I'm not jumping ship when, you know, when shit goes down, but when shit is good, we, you know, I'm just be on your team then. Like, nah, I'm gonna rock with you, you know, when shit is bad too, you know? So like, we all make mistakes, right? But first time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm just happy I'm not part of this circus this time around. You know what I mean? Like, and that's just what it is. It's a goddamn circus. And and it becomes at this point, you know, you know, I got love for him as a person, but now you disrespecting the sport. Like you just you just being like just blatantly like fuck this sport and fuck whoever I'm fighting and 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 you know, it's just nah it's not cool it's not cool because this is this is a sport you will lose your life in like like i think him and patrick day was cool yeah you know what i mean like in the, you know like that's not even cool that's not cool you know it's not and it, and i in truth i yeah i absolutely lost respect because when shit happened with me and greg and greg did his foul shit to me uh Jarrell was nowhere to be found. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? So now I just I just sip my little cup of tea. <laughs> I'm just sipping my cup of tea because it's mm. like it's like as hard as I went for him. I went so hard, like against everybody, against the media, everybody. And when when shit happened with me and Greg went to prison and he bounced a, a check on me for my salary. When, you know, I, he left me with nothing. Greg Cohen, yeah. Left me with nothing. And, 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 and promised me, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to run the company while I'm gone and blah, blah, blah. Gives me a check and it's no good. But he's mm. already in prison, so there's nothing I can do. Yeah. 
Well, when everybody gets word of it, I let Big Baby know, oh man, he ain't, no, he ain't even answer the phone. Mm. I didn't ask him for money. I wasn't coming to him like, oh, I, let me borrow a dollar. No, I was just venting as yeah. a thinking he was my friend, but he was nowhere to be found. Mm. So, you know, listen, you, you, you get the energy that you give. You know what I mean? Not always because my energy was always good. Gotcha. My energy was always good, but you know what? I'm still blessed though. You know, like I, I can't complain right now. I can't say, you know, I don't, I don't have a way to make it. I don't have, you know, a, a roof over my head and I don't have food on my table. Yeah. You know, so you, 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 you get the energy you give, man. The universe hears you, the universe sees you. And if you, you're doing fucked up shit, you're not gonna live, live a, a wonderful life. Yeah. And you're not gonna have a happy ending. That's just it. But there's no, there, there's no excuse for it. Zero, zero. You know, and I, I'm, I'm tired of holding my tongue, like, and just being cool about it and just like, oh man, what, whatever. Nah, it's not cool. And I'm not gonna advocate for it and I'm not gonna pretend like I'm okay with it. What do you mean holding your tongue? What do you mean by that? Just like, I never, re this is the first time I spoke on the Greg Cohen situation, first mm -hmm. of all. You know, so I've just held my tongue and, you know, trying to give him a chance and, you know, everybody a chance, like to just, but clearly nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like they've moved on. They haven't given a second thought about what's going to happen with Sarah or how Sarah doing. Or, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, well, when, when, right. you, when you say those people, when you say like, Rick, you know I mean, cause I do, I do know the situation and a lot of other, a lot of people in boxing, I think, are relatively understanding the situation of Greg Cohen being Greg Cohen, former owner, CEO of Greg Cohen Promotions, and was convicted of, I believe, fraud or fire fraud. Fire fraud, and and then kind of made moves, went to jail, and like you just mentioned, was supposedly had sent you a payment for you. No, he gave me a check that was bad. The day before he goes to prison. Knowing that the money wasn't going to be there. And then when he's in prison, calls me and admits to it and said, I didn't know what to tell you. Well, he had two months before the time he was sentenced to the day he went to prison to tell yes. me yes. he didn't have the money. Had and I could have figured something else uh, out. It had you out here looking like, you know, what the, you know. I walked out of that bank like a zombie. Mm. Mm. I didn't know what to do, but yet I, this is this is the type of person I am, right? Keith Hunter was fighting Barry shortly after that happened. Mm. I still went. I still went, not for Greg, for Keith. Yeah. For Keith, because if I wasn't there, nobody'd be taking care of him mm. and making sure his stuff was taken care of, and you know he had his check and things were done right, you know because. Keith's dad was my first boxing trainer. Mm -hmm. And he was unfortunately killed by the police. Wow. Um, Keith Hunter's, for the people that don't know, Michael Hunter's. Yeah, um, the young boy. Yeah, so, yeah. and I, I got love for that family. So, I, you know, I was gonna show up regardless, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that he was good. But, um, but yeah, like I didn't get paid for that. Mm. You know? Um, but yeah, like you, like Greg is in there because he did did wrong and um, this happened because you can't do shit to people and expect good things to happen to you. So I'd love to be a fly on that wall. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'd love to be a fly on that wall. Mm. I, 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 I feel you. Like you've worked with these individuals, you work with these people. You built relationships. Six years. With, yeah. Six years. Six years I was with that company and I did not deserve that. You know, I deserved honesty. 
if he, if he said to me, you know, Sarah, I, I can't, I can't do it. I don't have it. You know, you're going to have to find something else. I'd have respected him. I'd have said, listen, what can I say? What can I say? Mm-hmm. But the fact that he kept saying, oh, man, I got you. Don't worry. You and Naja are going to be fine. Um, you know, I'm going to need you to, to hold things down. Like, we even had a meeting before he left. Like, me, him, and Gino. And, like, we're going over everything. He's giving me lists of everybody's number and who he needs me to call and all these things. And, like, you still give me a bad check? Mm. Like, I had to up and move and everything. Like, I, yeah. you know, like, I had to change my whole life. My bills don't stop. Yeah. So, like, it's like COVID hit me twice mm. within a month. Greg went in February 4th, and uh, COVID hit basically uh, March 17th is when everything shut down. So I had started just bartending. And then March 17th, boom, can't do that no more. You know, so it it was, I mean, I definitely proved to myself that I'm a soldier for this. Like, no, I you, you proved you know, to a lot of people. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> that. You know, and I'm still okay. Like, yeah. I, you know, I'm okay. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, I hope Greg learns his lesson and I hope he does right by people. Do I think he'll be good in the game? No. Mm. Do I think he'll come back and make moves? No, because his reputation precedes him. Got you. You know, and and he had his son calling fighters, um, trying to sign new fighters while he's in prison. Like, okay, you sign him, and then and what you gonna do with him? Mm. While he's in, like, and, and and I think Peter Dobson called me. Just to Pete. Uh, yeah, Peter Dobson called me. He's like, don't you work for Greg? I'm like, no, I don't work for him anymore. He's like, yeah, because some guy DM'd me talking about he want to sign me and he represents Jarrell. And I, he showed me the DM and it was it was uh, Greg's son, who's like 23 or 24 or something like that. And um, and I was like, you know what? Like, he, did he tell you his father's in prison? <laughs> Like, I mean, I, or I just told him to ask Dre. Just mm-hmm. ask Dre. Like, ask Dre if it's a good idea. And then... Uh, Rosier. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, and then, um, you know, that was that. But, I mean, it's been other fighters, too. Like, they offered a fight, uh, um, a fight to Sam Taya. And Sam calls me and tells me, or Alex did. Alex offered Sam a fight and Sam mm-hmm. called me and he and he told them, he was like, listen, I'm not accepting any fights from GCP unless it comes from Serafina. Mm. And I don't even work there no more. <laughs> so, oh, it worked there no more. <laughs> I don't even work there no more. But, um, but yeah, like Greg was good, good to me, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. And you know, uh gave me a gave me a uh chance to really do my thing. But I just know that there there were there were other intentions there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't all good. So um it is what it is. You know, I learned I learned a lot dealing with that situation and all money and good money. Yeah. You now know? from from the experiences that you overcome from other promoters, other people that you work with in the business, and then you transition to working with Greg, how did that like kind of benefit you to go forward to where you are now? Um where what do you mean? Like how like how did it like in the words of did it provide you strength? Did it say, you know what? I learned this from over these guys. I work with course, these women. Of course, and- of course. Like, I mean, you know, I learned, I learned stuff from every promoter I worked with. Because, I mean, this this game is like a bag of characters. Mm-hmm. 
Like everybody has their own personality and a lot of people like, I mean, there, there's people that I love that I love and that like, they talk to me crazy, but I know them like <laughs> I'll say Brad Goodman, right? He's a fucking bully. He's such a bully, but I break, love him. Child break bench maker, right? Yeah. yeah. I love him to death. You know, he's such a bully and he's like, I'm busy. Don't, you're bothering me. But, uh, you know, but I, I like, it's fine. Like, I just like, <laughs> okay, but, but I know that I know he loves me, you know, I know it's love there, you know, so yeah. it's, you just have to be able to deal with a whole bunch of di different personalities in this game and a lot of like strong personalities, right? Like if people in this business are so like, like, you know, hardcore, a lot of them, you know, like even like Jolene from main events, right? Yeah. Like, she's got like this brashness about her and it's like, fuck this, but, you know what I mean? Like she's all this person, but like I fucking love her. She's the best. You know, she's she's great. And you know, Gary Shaw was the same way. Mm -hmm. Like fucking mean man. But I learned I've learned the most from him. You know, mm -hmm. I really did. I learned the most from Gary. So yeah. <laughs> Definitely um learned a lot dealing with all different types of people and how to deal with different types of people without taking things like you can't take things too personal in this business you know what i mean because it's like people are going to talk about you everybody talks about each other and that, that might be in every business but especially this one you know people are going to talk about you people are going to shit on you especially if you're a woman i'm mean, they're going to talk shit but you got to just gotta have thick skin and let that shit roll off i like the way you just mentioned that like the way you just expressed that you said you can't take things personal in this business. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's business. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Like, even with the fighters, right? Like, they, they trash talk. They talk shit. You know, yeah. they talk shit to each other. But after the fight, it's like, hey, we'll love, fight, bro. Love, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's, it's, all, it's all competition, you know? And it's, and it's, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit, and I don't, and I don't even, I don't, I don't take it, I don't take anybody serious. Like when they talk shit, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know what I mean? Like that's for now, but later it will be a different story, you know. Mm. And it, and it's okay. Like I don't, and if as long as people talking about you, that means you're doing something right, you know, because they wouldn't talk if if you weren't if on the scene. Facts. Now, what can we expect with you? Are you planning to? You know, because I know the last time, and I, I swear to God, I'm gonna get that video out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that last podcast we talked, um, you were you were looking to possibly venture into developing your own promotional company. Are you still, you know? Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna do promotions or if I'd rather do management. I think promotions right now is with the state of everything. Is, gotcha, gotcha. You know, kind yeah. of difficult. Um. Especially if you're not one of the big boys, yeah, right? Yeah. Like club shows are going to be kind of done for a while, I think. Because yeah. um, without an audience, how do you make a profit? You can't. Yeah. So um, I'll tough. probably just get into management, you know, help some of these guys that that I still, you know, am in contact with and want my assistance and, and go from there. Like, you know, it's it's frustrating for me a little bit because it's like starting all over again mm -hmm. but i know something will will happen you know it's just a matter of time okay. you know because like what i've learned in in this sport and what i've been through um you can't buy that experience and you can't learn that in any school so people are someone's gonna need me mm -hmm. you know someone's gonna say hey can you help on this show or do this like you know whatever so i'm not really too concerned about that aspect of it okay all right yeah well i appreciate your time yeah you know, we, we've been trying to situate this for a little while right, okay. <laughs> sure. you know, but you've been moving you you, you stay busy and, I, and i'm just so happy to see that you're doing well um i am going to purchase a a a painting soon enough. Trust me on that. Sure. I just don't know which picture I'm going to provide you, but I'm going right. to. <laughs> I don't know because because my daughter she you know she up and down so 
I don't want to go for. I might just do two. I don't know. I don't care. I might get a, right, before right, and right. after. You know what I mean? But definitely right. get a painted. I wanted to say something too, and I forgot. I was gonna throw this in there. Yeah, take your time. Um, when the stuff happened with Greg at first, a lot of people were like, "You shouldn't sue him. You shouldn't. You shouldn't speak on it. You shouldn't do anything because the other promoters are aren't gonna want to deal with you. They'll be afraid to deal with you." Hmm. And I'm like, how backwards is that? That makes no sense. How backwards is that? Like, like so basically you're saying that all prom like promoters are going to do shit like this. Yeah, that, yeah, that made no, yeah. Like that would, that would make them scared. Why? Why would they be scared if they're not doing anything? Under, shit? Yeah, anything underhanded, anything illegal, like, you know, anything right. foul. So like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, like what? What do you mean? So. Yeah. But this is actually, yeah, like I said, my first time speaking on it in um, in public. Because <laughs> obviously I've spoken to people about it, but yeah. never like on an interview or anything like that. Oh, you're going to get a lot of phone calls after this. They're going to say, hey, Sarah, can you tell me about this or that day? <laughs> right, 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 right. But you know what? Like I heard, I would hear stuff. I would hear stuff and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, Cause I didn't know for sure I wouldn't speak on it and I wouldn't give it too much thought. Yeah. Like about uh, accusations and all that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just, I was like, well, as long as it's good to me. Yeah. He, you know, he, but that's he, like he, what he, I said, all money ain't good money, you know, like. Yeah. You can walk like a duck, it quack like a duck. Yeah, it gotta be a, it ain't a planet. It might be a duck, you know <laughs> what I mean? So, yeah. Let me ask you this before you go. What do you think is gonna happen next week? Big baby. I think he's done. I think he's done. Mm. Um, I don't. First of all, I don't think he could fight without it anyway. Like, I mean, I, I just clearly he's he just there that there's like a mental Damn. health thing going on. Like, that's not normal. You know, that's not that's not a normal thing, like to throw that kind of money away and then when you finally get your life back on track, you throw it away again. Like it that <sighs> makes absolutely no sense. And you have to there has to be something like and, and not to say like I'm not bashing him. Yeah, okay? yeah, absolutely not. Like I'm not bashing Abs him. But, absolutely not. But that's a mental health thing. That is not a normal way to 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 go about things especially something like this you get your life on track and you write like it's like somebody that's an alcoholic hmm. you finally get your life back on track and you just gonna go well let me just go ahead and have another drink because i just got this great job hmm. like a celebration you know what i mean yeah, yeah. It's, it's but it's, it's like a it's, relapse it's, it's a relapse it's, it's exactly it's it's deep rooted is deep rooted and I think that he needs to really, um, and the people around him need to pull him to the side and say, hey, you, you might need to talk to somebody. And I'm not being funny, I'm gotcha. dead serious. Yeah, I'm dead serious. Cause that's something that, especially with fighters, I think that's overlooked. And I don't know if maybe you can agree or not, but it's kind of like a stigma in, cause I, I don't know for sure, but in the black community, it is. Keep going. Okay. Cause, like, cause I, cause like, I'm a, I, yes, it is. Upon, it is. Like looked down upon. Mental like, health. Air, mental air, health air, issues. Air, yes. Mental right? health like, issues. But, there you go, Sarah. Keep going. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So I just. I just. <laughs> cause you know, it's facts. It's facts. I just feel like it's like in the black community, it's like you're just supposed to be tough and deal with it. Yes. And, you know and. Um, and self-medicate. Yeah. You know, yeah. with what marijuana or drinking or yes. whatever. But I also know that's that's systemic too because of the fact that mental health and and um also like insurance and these things weren't always available. Mm -hmm. You know, like they weren't always available in the community, so they were forced to self-medicate, right? Yeah. So, but me growing up, like I always saw white people going to the therapist and the psychiatrist and talking through their problems and getting on medication. And you know, if you need medication, you need medication. It doesn't make you crazy. It's just, just you just need it. Yeah, you need some some type of balance. And with and, and within our community, African American community, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's true. 
a lot of us, we look upon ourselves as being weak-minded if we feel like we're going through some form of depression or we feel like we got to utilize a certain substance to balance our day-to-day lifestyle. Exactly. And our coping mechanisms, our coping skills are not necessarily educated. We're not educating around our, our we're not educating around our coping skills and mechanisms that we can utilize to not indulge in certain substances to sustain right. our mental health. That's what I'm okay. you know, really trying to say. A lot of times we find ourselves like, oh, you're a punk if you're doing this, or you're, or you're a right. sucker, you whack if you do right. that, instead of just say, you know what, I'm going through a lot of things, I'm dealing with a lot of personal issues, and I need not to indulge in this form of substance to make sure that I can maintain this personal lifestyle or to get over this personal obstacle. And I'm not saying that, you know, Big Baby is going through that. I'm just saying in general, from an African-American right. lifestyle, you know. Right. And I'm glad that you mentioned that as well, because it's true in our culture. It's very true because in our Because, like, culture. even you can, you our can use boxing as, a, as an example. You can use yeah. boxing as a prime example, right? A lot of these kids come from the hood. They come from poverty. And they were in school. Devin, right, was getting into fights all the time. Now, and you mentioned that to me about the ADHD thing. Right. And everybody now, a, that, white yes. family, yeah. a white family might automatically take him to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Or put him on some Ritalin or something. <laughs> right. But Devin's father took him to the boxing gym. And let him get it off. <laughs> right? So it's, you know, it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but I do believe that it's necessary. Yeah. You know, um, it is necessary and, you know, um, when you do have a kid that's overly aggressive yeah. and just lashing out and you know, they're, yeah, you take them to the boxing gym, but are they going to be able to keep it in the boxing gym? Yes. You know, so it's important to, to, to um, get that looked at early on yeah. and to not be ashamed of it. Like it's like a bad thing. Yeah. It's something, that can, be, it's something it's not- that can be addressed early. Full, full, early yeah full early and, and 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 then you then you avoid so many problems in the future Later on in life exactly you know you avoid so much headache and and you know one one bad decision can change your life you know early on as a kid yes. you know one they they're trying kids as adults you know so you you mess up do one bad thing it changed your whole life. So they, they're killing them before they turn adults too. Right, right. <laughs> so um, I just think that it's important for, in especially in the African American community, um, that it's it's spoke uh, spoken about without shame. Absolutely. You know, because it's it's always everybody has a therapist in the white community. Everybody's on <laughs> some type of Prozac or <laughs> uh, Zoloft. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like everybody's on something, you know. Oh, you, you got some more soul lost on you. Let me get a couple. You need a couple Adderalls, a couple Adderalls, a Prozac, you get a, you know, a little concoction. Oh shit! I you can't. Know? I can't it's with you. Definitely, uh, it's important. It's important, and um, you know, like, but you see a lot of fighters that beat on women. Yeah. You know, so they clearly can't keep it in the ring. You know what I'm saying? So these are things, these are issues that need to be addressed. Okay. So um, that might be, that might be a good little thing for you to start up. Okay, now. (laughs) You know, 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 throw it at me real quick, lad. I I caught the jab. I caught the jab. Start talking about it. Hey, Park, hold that. Start talking about it. Like, hey, uh. I'm gonna go see that therapist. <laughs> oh man, I can't with you. Mm-hmm. All right, so before I let you go, let everybody know where they can contact you for not only your amazing artwork, your paintings, and everything, but you know oh. everything else. Yeah, you still got the jackets too, right? I do all that. Okay, cool. I do all that. All right. I'm a Renaissance woman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you could catch me on Instagram at uh, Sarah Fina, Sarah with an H, Fina, F-I-N-A, underscore the artist, because ain't no boxing going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way 
way to catch me on there. I mean, I'm on Twitter too. What's my Twitter handle? It's just Sarah underscore Fina. Yeah. So, but I'm not on there a lot. Okay. I you try sure? To, you sure you're not on there a lot? I, I, try, I try to stay <laughs> off there. I just I po- I posted a video today, like just me sipping my little tea. <laughs> that was my comment. <laughs> but I'm like you're gonna get the exclusive so i'm not even gonna like do any other interviews or comments at all all right but i in closing i do wish Jarrell all the best i yeah. hope greg becomes a better person and um i don't wish any harm on him but i hope he does he, he becomes a better person and for from this okay and yeah you know, God bless, God bless both of them, man. Like, you know, I hope they learn and and they get their get their act together. Okay. All right, cool. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. I truly appreciate this. All right. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I'm gonna speak to you soon enough. All right. All right, cool. Peace. Peace.